is one thing i have a problem i have a major problem in life actually see what is my problem i will start explaining from this part because it talks about nakshatra na bhai i have a very serious issue to be very honest with you astrology is a subject that i love i cannot say it is like my child because astrology is elder i am younger it's like you know father astrology is like father or mother so i have a name for the goddess of astrology i call it jyotishmati mati means intelligence jyotish is astrology so i call the mother goddess of astrology by the name of jyotishmati this is a personal name to that deity and i have particularly seen that whenever i take this name before doing any work the work is successful in the own particular invention now when you love a subject you cannot see bad things happening with it i am going to talk about nakshatra lords for a bit because it is something that is very essential and see for public i cannot do anything but for my students it is my duty to clarify a few things which i hate in astrology <laughs> one of them is this nakshatra lordship but what problem i have to be very honest with you what problem i have profit kaaj ho gayi hmm the problem so see there's two things first of all why i should tell it to the world secondly why i should tell it to you those who are in nakshatra course they know my approach but why everyone else should know it it is simple because first of all i do astrology because i love it hmm? so for the love of it and second thing is suppose there is a person named suresh and i love suresh suppose one day suresh forgets to take his purse goes to a shop orders for something and because he is not having the purse he is not able to purchase it suppose you see it and you start telling everyone that suresh is a poor person how true it will be that was a particular incident that happened with suresh one day this suresh is nakshatra <laughs> this is the only problem so the thing is all of my astrological contributions are for the betterment of the astrological world in my youtube channel and in everything that i do i am very non trip i am very you know like i am i am always corrective telling the right method and the right thing that needs to be done right because if you do something if you practice something and you don't make a change in that area then what practice you are doing i don't want to take name but many companies create product just for the sake of creating the product and making money out of it like if if you are into an automobile sector your department is not only to launching a vehicle selling it and making money your equal responsibility is to avoid road accidents give more security features and revel create revolution in the field of vehicles right the same thing goes with astrology also and so this is the only thing i keep on telling the truth i will keep on telling <laughs> the only problem i have is bhargottam ke to in the second half in the sign pisces so you know the jupiter influence keeps on banging here and there so the basic point is there are 27 nakshatras that i am pretty sure that you all know about hmm? and these 27 nakshatras are an integral part of astrology we haven't covered this 27 nakshatras in the course though though we have covered many predictive principles after this we are going to cover a few of the principles as well that needs to be understood the 27 nakshatras start from ashwini and the 27 nakshatras are ashwini bharani kritika rohini mrigashira adra punarvasu pushya asalesha magha 
पूर्व फाल्गुनी पुत्र फाल्गुनी हस्त चित्र स्वाति शाखा अनुराधा ज्येष्ठा मूला पूर्वाषाढ़ा उत्तराषाढ़ा श्रवण निष्ठा सत्विशा पूर्वाभद्रापर पुत्राभद्रापर दंड रेवती दीज आर दी सेवन नक्षत्र बोल दिया नाम भाई कुछ लोगों को नाम भी नहीं पता होते इन दिस पर्टिकुलर PDF that you are going to get it is a 72 page long PDF. I have written which which nakshatras fall in which which rashi. That will be like good. Now the problem is Ashwini ruled by Ketu. <laughs> only problem, the only issue that I want to talk about that why Ashwini is not ruled by Ketu. What problem happens when Ashwini is ruled by Ketu? Right. And then when Ashwini is not ruled by Ketu, how to make predictions using Ashwini? Then, hmm, so there are few, very few very basic things that one needs to understand. So first of all, it is wrong at many fundamental levels. But where it is right, that needs to be first understood so that we understand where it is wrong. There is a dasha that is named Vimshottri. Vimshottri Dasha, it is the most popular Dasha. Most popular doesn't translate into the best. Right? Still, but people think it is popular, it is best. <clears throat> Maruti cars are very popular. <laughs> Not the best. Okay, but okay, whatever be an issue. It is very popular not the best. People think that Parashar have invented Vimshotri Dasha. That is a wrong conception. Parashar have told Purva, Charya, Mukhashatam as I have learned from people elder than me or people practicing astrology before me. So this is not an opinion of Parashar. Vimshotri Dasha is not an invention of Parashar. Parashar talks about 42 Dashas. Out of those 42 Dashas, Vimshotri is one. So the preference of Parashar for using Vibhishottri is 1 by 40. It's a very small number. Around 2.3% probability that Parashar prefers. 0.1. Now where does Vibhishottri come from that I will not talk about? <clears throat> okay. So it's for some another day, otherwise you will be very, very confused. Now the second point is right, Parashar like Parashar is not using Vimshotri. So, talking of Vimshotri, there are three types of Dashas. One is Nakshatra Dasha, one is Rashi Dasha, and one I will say other Dasha. So Nakshatra Dasha is like Vimshotri where Ashwini is ruled by Ketu. So if your moon is in Ashwini, you are born in Ketu Dasha. Now Ashwini Nakshatra is 0 degree to 13 degree 20 minutes. And Ketu Dasha is for 7 minutes. So basically when, so say moon is 10 degrees in Ashwini. So the dasha at birth will be 13, 20, right? For a total duration of six years. And whatever uh, degrees a moon have already passed by, that much duration of dasha is already passed before birth. So calculating the current position of moon in the nakshatra and then calculating the dasha. Moon at the starting of the nakshatra will give complete year of the dasha. At the end of the nakshatra will give no years for the dasha and proportionately in between. Is the calculation that you do in nakshatra dasha. That is Vimshotri, Ashtotri, Shodashotri, Kalchakra dasha, etc. Et when you go to Jagannath or the software, in this dasha section, there is this nakshatra dasha section, right? And all these things that you see, Vimshotri, Dasha, Ashtotri, Dasha, Tribhagi, Vimshotri, Dasha, Kalchakra, Dasha, Yuguni, Dasha, Dvisapati, Samadasha, Satrim, Chat, Samadasha, Dvadashotri, Dasha, Chaturasiti, Samadasha, Shatatrika, Dasha, Shudshotri, Dasha, Panchotri, Dasha, Shashti, Haini, Dasha. All these Dashas are Nakshatra Dashas, which have the basic composition that one Nakshatra is ruled by a planet. When moon goes to that Nakshatra, the starting Dasha, when the person is born, belongs to that. Hmm? After this, there are Rashi Dashas. So rather than saying, you know, that like, for example, Rashi Dasha will be something like the ascendant is Virgo. So first Dasha will be a Virgo, will be for X number of years as per the calculation. 
then second dasha can be for any other rashi for any other sign right so that's just rashi dasha now nakshatra dasha basically it is calculated on nakshatras but the dasha belong to planets not necessary for example in vimshotri dasha because moon is in adra even without checking where is moon just by because the person is born in rahu dasha i can know that moon is in adra because of vimshotri dasha right so because moon is in adra nakshatra that belongs to rahu in vimshotri dasha it will be dasha of rahu so basically it is a dasha which is calculated on nakshatra and runs on planets every nakshatra dasha is not like this for example kala chakra dasha kala chakra dasha is calculated on nakshatra so moon is in adra so dasha is of adra pada 1 adra pada 2 adra pada 3 adra pada 4 and the next nakshatra punarvasu pada 1 punarvasu pada 2 punarvasu pada 3 punarvasu pada 4 and next nakshatra pushya pada 1 pushya pada 2 pushya pada 3 pushya pada 4 but here in kala chakra dasha which is calculated on nakshatras the dashas don't belong to planet instead belongs to the rashi right belongs to the rashis right so nakshatra dashas are of both types so nakshatra dasha is basically the dasha which is calculated on nakshatra and the dasha can be running of a planet and or of a <coughs> rashi also on the other way on the other hand the rashi dashas are calculated based on rashi and the dashas also belong to rashi so aries dasha taurus dasha hmm? and the prediction is accordingly if aries is in the fifth house the result of fifth house happens if aries is having an exalted planet result of exalted planet happens if the lord of aries is exalted the lord the result of exalted lord happens so on and so forth the third type of the dasha is dasha based on houses most ancient, most uh, important of them that you know is sudarshan chakra sudarshan chakra dasha we are going to cover a little bit of sudarshan in the course also right so out of the many techniques i will especially try to cover sudarshan when we cover dasha on the second last class of the course right and i am in famous for researches to be very honest so i will teach you a whole lot of researches and not generalist but i don't like general things i am a, like you know i i have though i have a i don't have a very good venus though but i am a lover of luxury and precision right so i will take teach you precise and luxurious astrology is what i will teach you and not the normal thing whatever sudarshan dasha which is based on houses have a concept that first year of life belongs to the first house second year of the life belong to the second house third year of the life belong to the third house and so on and so forth after the 12 year 12th year of life which belongs to the 12th 12th house again the 13th year of life again belongs to the ascendant then the circle goes again 24th year is completed in the 12th house 25th year is again ruled by ascendant then circle goes to the house 36 year completed in the 12th house 37th year once again comes to the ascendant right so this is something based on houses <clears throat> and then there are i am not naming it house based on the sha but other the shas because there are different different type, types of the shas here as well okay <clears throat> okay coming to the basic point that i was dealing with so ashwini ruled by ketu i will be very clear about it so listen listen very carefully out of all of the 42 dashas that parashar have mentioned there is one dasha vimshotri where ashwini nakshatra is ruled by ketu bharni nakshatra is ruled by venus kritika nakshatra is ruled by sun and so on and so forth this goes up to ashlesha nakshatra being ruled by mercury then after ashlesha from magha the order repeats so magha is again ruled by ketu and so on and so forth this is one of the dasha that is known as vimshotri vimshotri is very popular because of two reasons two separate reasons there is a shloka that kalau parashri smrta in kali yuga one should remember parashar astrology it is not astrology 
in kali yuga one should remember parashar and this doesn't mean bphs or breath parashar hora this means parashar uh smriti just give me a second हाँ तो क्या कह रहा था मैं सो यू वेर ऑन मूड म्यूट फॉर सम टाइम सॉरी पराशर स्मृति हाँ सो दिस इज फॉर पराशर स्मृति स्मृति लाइक मनुस्मृति यू हैव हर्ड व्हाट इज मनुस्मृति सो स्मृति धर्मा धर्मा द धर्मा विच नीड्स टू बी फॉलो सो इफ यू आर स्ट्रक इन अ सिचुएशन व्हाट यू शुड डू दैट इज डेल्ट इन स्मृति Manusmriti, which is very popular, surprisingly, is to be used in Sati Yuga, not in Kali Yuga. So it is told that if someone have an affair with a lady, you should make an iron image of that lady, iron idol of the lady, should heat it till it becomes red, and then tell the person to hug the lady and lead him to death this way. If one have a relationship with another lady. If you do this today in Kali Yuga, eighty percent of the population will be finished. So it is for Sat Yuga, not for Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, you should follow the rules and regulations told by Parashar, given in Parashar Smith. That is one point. Even if you take that breath, Parashar should be followed in Kali Yuga. Vimshottri is not the dasha propagated by Parashar. Why? Because of the reason that I have told her. Out of all the dashas, Parashar have. Said that particularly, that Vimshottri dasha is the prime dasha. Dasha bahu vidastasu mukhya Vimshottri mata. There are many dashas, and out of many people, Vimshottri is the prominent among them, not the most accurate among them, or not the most preferred against them. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Now, who coming to the point? so all and all there are some texts some misinterpreted texts right some some little bit of misinterpretation like satya jatkam satyachari which tells that because ashwini is ruled by ketu and vimshottri dasha one can take ketu as the ruler of vimshottri uh, ketu as the ruler of ashwini and then can predict accordingly which results to navatara chakra so in navatara chakra what happens every nakshatra is divided into the set of 3 so first nakshatra is janma nakshatra 19th nakshatra and then so on, so on and so forth so there are three set of nakshatras that particular thing is told for navatara this is one of the major things that we are going to learn but you should have some background information if you don't have a background information problem happens not having a background information is like smoking in a non smoking zone of a court it lands you to jail so better have good information about things right so that we will develop the intellect needed higher coming to my point i will not talk about satyacharya's method and not talk about satyacharya not confusing you right now but it is the opinion of satyacharya for a particular technique that needs to be understood for a particular technique this is the method of satyacharya and any rule that is made for uses in a particular technique cannot be taken as an astrological basic such as marana karak sthan so there is a concept that saturn is marana karak in lagna jupiter is marana karak in the third house venus is marana karak in the sixth house and so on and so forth If you read classics, Marana Karak Sthan is mentioned by Jatak Parijat in the second last chapter while dealing with Kala Chakra Vesha. The basics of astrology are dealt in the first and the second chapter of any classic, because the concept of Marana Karak Sthan is not mentioned in chapter one and two of Jatak Parijat. It cannot be taken as a basic rule, hence cannot be used also. Okay, now what Marana Karak leads to? If I have Venus in Marana Karak, should my wife die? 
If you tell me this result, then I can show you many horoscopes with Venus in the sixth house, spouse or not dying. If you say all the significations of the Venus die, how many significations of the Venus will die? Can you say that Venus is the karka for semen? It goes to Marnakarakstan. One will not be able to produce a child. I can give you a thousand horoscope of people with Venus and the sixth house produce the child. So basically, you can tell goal mole result, confusing results, contradictory results. This planet is in Marnakarak. It goes bad. What do you mean by bad? What implications it have? No clear answer. Right. So such principles which don't lead you to a result, which are self-contradictory, boggling, just wishing to waste the time of the client or confuse the people should not be used if you want to do good astrology. If you want to do bad astrology, then you can do anything. And that doesn't matter. Okay. This point is clear. <clears throat> so these are not the basic rules. If these were the basic rules, then in the first chapter or in the second chapter, when sages say Mars rules Aries, they can also write Ketu rules of Sveni. It will only take one shloka. But you will never find it written. You give me one shloka, I can give you a shloka, Mars rules Ashwini. You cannot give me a shloka which tells Ketu rules Ashwini. Mars rules Aries, I can give you a shloka. In all texts, it is written Mars rule Mars Aries, Mars rule Aries, Mars rule Aries. In every book, it is written. Ashwini is ruled by Ketu, is nowhere written. Point. Point number two. Talking of Vimshotri, it is a dasha which excludes Abhijit Nakshatra. Originally, there are 28 nakshatras. But for the uh, like uses, we ignore one nakshatra, which is Abhijit, to have uniformity in calculation. Sadly, Vimshotri Dasha also doesn't take Abhijit into consideration. Ashtotri does. In Ashtotri Dasha, there is a calculation for Abhijit. In Vimshotri Dasha, there is no calculation for Abhijit. It is also believed by many. Just give me a second. Okay. Vimshatri doesn't take Abhijit. There's two opinions. One opinion is in earlier times before the research named Rashi, Abhijit was also used. This seems to be true. Because in Muhurta, which comes before predictive astrology, Abhijit is used a lot. After the invention of Rashi, because they had to fit all the nakshatras in all the Rashis, Abhijit was excluded. So in Rashi-based principles and other predictive principles which arise out of Rashi, you don't find specific mention of Abhijit. However, Dashas like Ashtotri take Abhijit into consideration, indicating that Ashtotri was researched earlier than Vimshatri. However, so the basic point is it is only Vimshotri Nakshatra, Vimshotri Dasha where Ashwini is ruled by Ketu. In other Dasha, Ashwini is not ruled by. It is ruled by some other plan. So how feasible it is to say that Ashwini rules Ketu? Keeping in mind that in every Dasha, the rulership of Ashwini will change to some other planet. Can you say that Ashwini is ruled by Ketu? We cannot say that. If Mars rules Aries, he always rules Aries. At any point, in any circumstance, in any situation. Right? Everywhere. It doesn't change by the technique. I cannot tell you that you predict for marriage using this technique and in this technique take the Lord of Aries as Venus. You cannot say that. So constant principle which is always applicable forms the basic of any science. 
not only astrological science talking of the rulership this is an excel sheet that i have made i think long earlier i have did a compilation of 1 2 3 1 3 2 3 3 3 4 5 3 5 7 8 6 7 8 7 8 7 8 षष्टि है नी नाइन एंड सेट त्रिशत समादशा आई हैव टेकन अ कंपैरिजन ऑफ टेन नक्षत्र दशा आई हैवन इंक्लूडेड योगनी दशा कालचक्र दशा एट सेट पॉइंट सो दैट कैन आल्सो बी इंक्लूडेड इट विल मेक अ लिस्ट ऑफ ट्वेल्व दशा गोइंग टुवर्ड सिंपल नक्षत्र अश्विनी नक्षत्र एंड विंशोत्तरी दशा इज रूल्ड बाय के द सेम अश्विनी नक्षत्र एंड अष्टोत्तरी दशा इज रूल्ड बाय राहु The same Ashwini nakshatra and Shodashotri dasha is ruled by Ketu again, but in the Dwadashotri dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Jupiter. In Panchotri dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Venus. In Satavdika dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Moon. In Chaturasiti sama dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Saturn again. In Duisaptati sama dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Moon again. In Shasti Haini dasha, Ashwini is again ruled by Jupiter. And in Sarth Rimshat Samadasha, it is again ruled by Venus. Even if you say that Ketu rules Ashwini in two dashas, that is in Vimshotri and Ashtotri, then Jupiter also rules Ketu in two dashas, both Ashtotri and Shasti, and and Moon also rules uh, Ashwini in two dashas, Satavdika and Visupati Sama, and Venus also rules. Uh, Ashwini in two dashas, uh, in Panchotri and in Sarthamshat Samadasha also. So basically, the Lord of Ashwini is Ketu, Rahu, Jupiter, Venus, Moon, Saturn, all five. Are you getting my point? So basically, none of them rules Ashwini, right? None of them rules. I think the only planet excluded is Sun. Sun and Mars are the two planets who don't have an ownership over Ashwini. Living Sun and Mars aside, or Mercury also. Living Sun, Mars, Mercury aside, every planet rules Ashwin. Okay, so it is not very feasible to say that Ketu rules Ashwin. And if someone says that, it is a demonstration of sheer ignorance and lack of knowledge. Two things. Hmm. It is like someone who have never went out of his home saying India is the only country in the world. so before it was discovered that moon is rotating around earth moon sorry earth is rotating around sun everyone believed that every planet is rotating around earth only and the one who told the truth was crucified right so please never say ketu rules ashwini and give me give an in uh, give an introduction of how ignorant and uh, like how ignorant and murkh you are how big a fool you are this is the first thing and as my student please never do okay meri nag mat kada please kabhi mat kada what problem happens then i will also tell you okay, this is the first point right this is completely lack of ignorance are you getting my point yeah so don't show that an in an intelligent person who is not well learned should at max remain quiet because once he opens his mouth this is what chanakya says you know that fools should not open their mouth and this becomes a problem first point another problem what is another problem so okay the point is ketu is not rule ketu cannot rule ashwini because there are other dashas also where ashwini is ruled by other planets that's fine But we, but what if we say that in our experience also, Vimshottri is the best of the show. If someone goes on to believe that, or someone says me that no sir, in my experience also Vimshottri is the best of the show, I will have the same answer that a rich person will have on those poor people who say there is no money, there is lack, lack is a hypothetical amount. right so only vimshotri works and other dasha doesn't work comes out of complete ignorance right i have given many case studies on my 
like I, I think I have written an article on Shashti Haini Desha where I have used the horoscope of Pamela Anderson. You take the horoscope of Pamela Anderson, apply Vimshottri Desha and tell me how the events are matching. That is the only reason to, that is the only reason there are at least 100 rules, more than 100, 200 rules in all the books written by, you know, modern authors write books, how to predict using Vimshottri Desha, how to predict using the Shah, etc, etc. Many people have written books in the last 200 years. If you take all these books and write all the rules, you will have more than 200 rules to predict through Vimshottri Desha. Is it so difficult? And thinking over it that someone will use all the 200 rules and then will predict, it will be a very time consuming, you know, self contradictory task. Another important point why Ashwini should not be ruling Ketu, should not be ruled by Ketu. There are a few things that I wish to talk about. Then I will tell you the answer. Then what to do? Example, let's take Ashwini. On not taking Ashwini, let's, let's take a few nakshatras. Let's take a very cute nakshatra, Pushya. And suppose that you are taking the Vimshatri Lordship, that Pushya is lorded by Saturn. So do you know Pushya is a very good nakshatra? Everything doing in Pushya is highly appreciated. Any good work can be done in Pushya. Pushya gives good wealth. Leaving marriage aside, only marriage should not be done in Pushya because anything done in Pushya is repeated again and again. So marriage should not be done in Pushya and other than that, everything is very good to be done in Pushya. Pushya is a very auspicious nakshatra. Then how come Saturn becomes the lord of it who is a very inauspicious planet? Do Saturn indicate new beginnings? Do Saturn indicate blessings? Then how can Saturn become the lord of Pushya nakshatra who indicate all these things? Doesn't seem like contradictory. The nature of Pushya and the nature of Saturn is poles apart. Saturn is north, Pushya is south. Let's take a few more nakshatras. Uh, Swati is a very good nakshatra. Swati leads to the birth of pearls. In Swati Nakshatra, rain happens in Swati Nakshatra that falls into an animal leads to the making of pearl. Swati is a very beautiful Nakshatra. Very lovely. So what, what about Rohini? Rohini is ruled by moon. The deity of Rohini is also moon though. The deity of Rohini is also Chandrama. But the traits of moon and the Rohini is very devote, very much devoted to her husband. Rohini is known for her devotion. Chandrama, I have 28 wives. Doesn't match with devotion. Ne? self contradictory One devoted one is having 28 spouse. That doesn't match the nature of Rohini at any given point of time. Taking the Chitra Nakshatra, Chitra and Swati, both are a very beautiful Nakshatras. Ruled by Mars and Rahu respectively. Mars and Rahu, by no logic, good planets. No, not at all. Are another self-contradictory thing I haven't told you. Magha is ruled by ancestors. And the same, you know, super uh, active astrologers, Ketu rules detachment, Moksha. Moksha means the person don't have to become a Pitru. That is the only thing, na? that is the only reason. That is what moksha means. If one gets salvated, if one gets a salvation, will they become a bitru? No. One is Uttarayan, one is Dakshinayan. Yeah. One is Uttarayan, one is Dakshinayan. It's another self contradictory point. All these bad nakshatras, na? Aslesha is a bad nakshatra, it is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is a benefit plan. Mercury is a good planet. No, Mercury is a benefit planet. Aslesha is a bad nakshatra. Jeshta is even more ridiculous. Jeshta is the name of Alakshmi. Alakshmi is the elder brother, elder sister of Lakshmi who denotes poverty, fights, etc. 
Later on, she became a Mahavidya, and I will not take the name because married women are not supposed to listen to her name. So, then that side. Mercury represents Vishnu. It cannot rule a negative nakshatra like Jeshtha. Vishnu, the spouse of Vishnu is Lakshmi, and Lakshmi is arch rival of Jeshtha. So, how can Mercury, who represents Vishnu, whose spouse is Lakshmi, can rule Jeshtha nakshatra, who is completely against Lakshmi, completely opposite Lakshmi? Lakshmi gives prosperity, Jeshtha gives poverty. How can Mercury rule it? Going further, Satvisha, the hundred healers, Satvisha indicates healing, is ruled by Rahu, which indicates a disease which cannot be easily diagnosed. Then how it will be healed if it cannot be diagnosed? Satvisha means, you know, something which is, Satvisha is a thousand healers. And Rahu indicates disease which one cannot easily assess, one cannot easily find. Which doctors cannot find easily. That disease is indicated by Rahu. And Satvisha are the hundred rulers, hundred healers. Do they have a connection? They don't have a connection at all. The same thing goes with Revati. Revati is a Gandhanta nakshatra, but that is ruled by Mercury, a benefit planet. Gandhanta nakshatra, that is a bad nakshatra ruled by a good planet like Mercury. You know what it is? Using astrology without using mind. Like a blind person driving a car. I will not love to sit there. No. Blind person can do anything, not drive a car. Sorry. And nothing against those who are blind. That's the truth. Right. So the only thing is anyone who takes Ashwini ruled by Ketu is not talking of experience. In Hindi, there is a saying, Koenga Mendak. Have access to a limited knowledge, not well read, neither well experienced. And I don't want to talk bad about anyone. So, not talking further on it. Okay. Then what do you do? If Ketu doesn't rule Ashwini, then what you do? Hey, but there is one more graph. Ask me one. I think this is my personal thinking. See, not all. But I think, you know, many people come to astrology because they are not able to find any other job. So they're like, oh, this seems a easy business. Let's do it. That's the problem. A scholarly subject should be done by intelligent people, not by useless people. I, I saw... Okay. This is one more problem. When you say, so, you know, this as astrology, I think, is done by people of low intellect. I think generally in the last few times, it has been the case. So after Englishmen have invaded India, intelligent people got a government job. And unintelligent people did astrology then. <laughs> that becomes the problem. However, this is one more thing. I think, you know, by using only these uh, lords, you know, the uh, planet as the nakshatra lord, you are limiting yourself. Ask me how. When you say Ashwini, Magha and Mula is ruled by Ketu, you are wasting the significations of three nakshatras, saying me that all three indicate the same thing. That is shown also by Ketu. It kills the diversity. It kills the diversity. It, it destroys the diversity. But why there is Aries and Scorpio when both of them are ruled by Mars? There are many more things in Aries and Scorpio, except from being loaded by Mars. So basically what you should do is you should load, use the deities, not the Lord. Lord is, Lord is planet. Deity is the God. You should use the deities of the nakshatra. I have a free YouTube series on this also. I teach it in the nakshatra course also. And I will teach you two, three users also. <clears throat> Many things I have. The Lord 
you know, all these 27 nakshatras have 27 different gods ruling them. Okay. 27 different gods rule these 27 nakshatras. And I have a YouTube series on that also. And there is many literature available on these gods as well. Right. So when you use only these nine planets lording these, these 27 nakshatras, you kill the diversity. You're killing the diversity and in turn killing the soul of astrology. These are the lord of these 27 nakshatras, right? So Ashwini is ruled by Ashwini Kumar, who is a son, who is a progeny of sun god. Bharani is ruled by Yama. He is a popular god. We know about him. Kritika is ruled by Agni. Rohini is lorded by Brahma. Mrigashira is lorded by Moon god Chandra. Agra is ruled by Rudra and Shiva. Punarvasu is lorded by Aditi, the mother of gods and demons. Pushya is ruled by Brihaspati, that is Jupiter. Asalesha is ruled by Sarpa, snake on which Vishnu sleeps. And snake is dangerous, right? Snake have poison. So Asalesha is a bad nakshatra. It will make sense. It is supposed to make sense when you use a real part of it. Magha is ruled by Pitrus, our ancestors. We do Pitru Tarpan for them. Purva Falgun is ruled by Aryama. That is an incarnation of sun god, a form of sun god rather. Uttra Falgun is ruled by Bhaga. That is a form of sun god. Hasta is ruled by Savita, a form of sun god. Rising sun is known as Savita. Savita is also worshipped in Gatri Mantra. Tat Savitru Varenya. Savita. Chitra is ruled by Twasta, who is a form of uh, sun god or Vishwagarma, the divine architect. Swati is ruled by Vayu. Vayu is the father of Hanuman and Bhim. Right? So you can say Swati is also ruled by Hanuman and Bhim also. Vishakha is ruled by Indra, the king of gods. Anuradha is ruled by Mitra. It's an incarnation of some god. Mitra means friend. Jeshtha is ruled by Indra again. Just give me one second. Okay. Till then you read the list. Mula is ruled by Niritti. Niritti is a god who always remains naked. Purvashada is ruled by Apaha. Apaha is Vipar, the lord of Vipar. Apambati is also the lord of the sky. Uttarashada is lorded by Vishwadevas. Shravan is ruled by Vishnu. Danishta is ruled by Ashtavashus, who later taken as a demon in Vedic literature. Satvisha is ruled by Varun, again later on taken as a demon. Purva Bhadraprad is ruled by Ajayak Pad, that is a form of incarnation of Shiva. Uttra Bhadraprad is ruled by Ahiru Bhaganya. And Revati is ruled by Pushan. Pushan is a god, a form of sun god. About all these gods, I have a, I have a series of video where I have described from Ashwini to Jeshta. And you know, how these deities of Ashwini and Jeshta, what are the nature of these deities and how they affect the lives of the individual. You can go through that series or you can quickly just Google their name. Google the name of Indra. You'll find in Wikipedia article, you read that Wikipedia article and you will know many traits of Indra. And all of these traits of Indra is applicable to Vishakha and Jeshta. So Ashwini is ruled by Ashwini Kumara having different significations. Magha is ruled by Pitrus having different significations and Mula is ruled by Niritti having different significations. This way you have more significations, diversity in astrology and better predictions. Rather than just using Ketu as the lord of these three nakshatras and making your astrology gizapita. And a repetitive, rough, useless astrology. So basically everyone born in Ashwini, Magha and Mula because they are ruled by Ketu should get instant moksha after their birth and should not live a life that they are not having. I guess this is the point one. 
Another logic is one Rashi is 30 degree. One nakshatra is 13 degree, 20 minute. Rashis are 12, nakshatras are 27. So by using the nakshatras, we are making astrology more accurate. Is it so? No. So if you learn Vedic traditional astrology, you don't have to put your mind on making it accurate. It is already very, very good. So there have been people before us, our ancestors, our magha, who have done the thing for us, right? We don't have to work more on that. So you must have heard of something that is known as Navamsh. So taking the nakshatra lordship, you are taking one lord for a nakshatra and thinking that you are using them. One nakshatra have four padas, known as, pada basically means legs, known as quarters. So one nakshatra is further divided into four subparts. Right? And one pada of nakshatra or one subpart of the nakshatra, one subpart of the four subparts map into Navamsha. So if you use Vedic astrology, Navamsha is something that you have to use very essentially. Right? Very essentially you have to use it. Navamsha is very essential. It is the backbone of astrology. And when you use Navamsha, not only using the nakshatra lots, you are even going one step more deeper. Using all the four legs of the nakshatra, you are dividing a nakshatra into four portions and then predicting accordingly, making it even more accurate. More accurate than just taking the nakshatra lot. And further dividing. But for that purpose, you should know how to use Navamsha. The irony is people use Navamsha also and nakshatra also. And I always remain amazed that how they don't come across a contradictory result. You know why? Because a fool person never comes across a dilemma. Because he's a fool. Hai na? So, murku ko chinta to hai nahi sakti. Ek chinta honne ke liye buddhi chahiye, wo usko hai nahi. Tension free rehna hai, to murku raho. Alag baat hai. Mat raho. <clears throat> this is second point. Abhi only these two points I will tell you. Hai na? Third point I have to tell. That is okay. So, wo main class mein bolunga. Itna part mein YouTube pe dalunga. Class ke liye alag secret hai. Baan ke alag rakte hai. So, uh, did you say, yeah, did you say that by using nakshatra, we are making astrology more significant? You said that I, I heard it. Ma'am, I am saying like by using navamsh, we are going even more deeper in the nakshatras. Okay. We are even taking one nakshatra by forgetting into four, hmm. and even going deeper into it. And if we use other divisional charts, then we are going even more and more deeper. For an example, one Rashi results into 60 Sasti Amshad, right? If you use D60 chart, one Rashi is divided into 60 portions. If we divide it into 60 portions, it is like we are dividing one Nakshatra into 24 parts. Even more deeper, right? Like one D60 is 60 portion of a Rashi. One Rashi have nine Nakshatra Padas. Right. And there are four Nakshatra Padas in a Nakshatra. So basically by using D60, we are dividing one Nakshatra into more than 24 portions. Even more deeper. Right. So by the uses of divisional charts, we do way, way much deeper. As we can even imagine. But to think about this, one should have intelligence. And for that to come, you have to be my student. This is the only way. <laughs> the jokes apart. The two ways, and either you do the hard work or let me do the hard work. Achha, there's two, two, three more things into it. And I will not, like, should I talk about it or should I not? So let's leave it right here itself. <laughs> 